Falling! Justin, do you got it? Yeah, I got it, Daryl. All right, Justin, I'm gonna ease off. You got it? Yeah. All right. You holding it? Yeah, I'm good. So now what I'm gonna do is press it down the line. At the same time, I'm just gonna reprobe for crevasses. If we fell into one, there might be another. I'm pressing down the line so that at any time if Justin started to slip, I could fall back into self-arrest and help him hold. So it's important that I keep that pressing adjusted. How we doing, man? I'm doing good. Communication is always the key so that both people know what they're doing. So at this point, we're gonna need to build some anchors. So the way Justin's holding this fall is he's got his ice axe buried in in the self-arrest position. He's keeping his body weight firmly on it, keeping it planted in the snow. He's also kicked his feet in all the way so that they're buried in that snow so he has really good buckets. So our next step is to build the anchors. I need to put them as far away from the edge as I can to give us maximum pull. So I'm going to put an anchor up here and I'm going to put one over here. We're going to bring the master point together and do it under the rope. All right, so at this point we've dug our anchors up here. If you look, I put it underneath the climbing rope. That's really important that we don't trap it. Also, if you look, my angle, because I've used long slings and then extended it out, is good. So at this point, I'm going to grab a beaner and get this master point clipped onto the rope so that at least if it should slide, there's that to stop him. Justin would get stuck in this and it would stop the fall. So now we're going to go ahead and rig this thing. Need to get my leg pressing out. They always get tangled. The leg pressing is going to be our primary attachment point. You could use a uh, cordelette. Since we're using a uh, small alpine rope here, it's only eight millimeters, I want to make sure I put plenty of wraps on it. All right, got that. Grab another locker here. This one I'm going to put up on the shelf on the bottom of it. I'm going to take my leg pressing. I'm going to put a muntner on there. We want to keep this pretty short. Do the muntner. Make a little loop there. Bring this through trapping those. So it's kind of a slip knot. Then to keep it from slipping, I pull a bunch through and I can tie myself an overhand right over that. I could also clip it with a beaner, but quite honestly, there's gonna be a lot of beaners in here. All right, I can lock that up now. So now, I actually have that climbing rope held. So we've got it on here. So Justin, yeah. why don't we go ahead and weight this? Okay. Ease off gently. Here I go. We wanna make sure we come up nice and gentle so that we make sure that the pressing holds. All right, great, it's holding. All right, give me a little slack as soon as you can and I'll get us clove hitched in. Excellent. So now I'm just gonna put a clove hitch on here. Help if I actually put the clove hitch on. Lock that thing up. Leave myself a little bit of slack in it. So now that's our backup to our hitch here. As long as I'm at it, I'm gonna go ahead and get us completely set up since I'm right here, might as well. Get our pressing mining pulley, clip that onto our master point, lock her up. All right, that's this part of the rigging. We're in, Justin can now come out of that system and we can both get to work. All right, so Justin, next, uh, you want to build the second set of anchors for us? Sure. And uh, I'll start getting myself mostly out of the system so I can go down and check on the climber. 
since I'm going down to check on the climber, I'll also prep the lip. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Good. All right, so Justin's going to build an anchor here. And what we want to think about with all of our anchors, as you already know, is what our direction of pull is for tying those two anchors together. So where is that master point going to be? We also want to make sure that we get it good and deep in this soft snow and that we fully entrench the, uh, the sling on it. We want to use a nice long sling. So he's going to cut that trench all the way to the bottom of the, of the, of the groove. It's a lot of work. All right, so Justin's building some secondary anchors for us here, and I've taken and gotten myself out of the climbing rope and attached myself to the anchor. And I'm still attached on the end of the rope, but I'm attached with my waist pressing, so I can go down and get to checking on the climber. What I'm gonna take down there is anything I need to prep the lip and my ice axe, of course. Maybe my second tool, maybe a shovel so that I can prep that lip. These things come in really handy. So we've been hurrying with the intent of getting down to our fallen climber as soon as possible so we can communicate. I'm going to keep checking for crevasses. Since we fell into one, we could fall into another. And I'm pressing down the rope with my waist pressing because if we fall into one, we need to be attached to the rope. As I get closer to the edge, I want to be thinking about how much rope stretch I'm going to have to make sure I don't go all the way over the edge. So that's probably good enough. When we get to the edge, got an anchor there, brought my extra tool and a shovel. How much we have to excavate the snow is kind of dependent upon how deep that powder is. So we're just going to have to shovel some of this out of the way until we can get it down so that we can get to the climber. And of course we came down to talk to the climber. How we doing? Can you climb out? Best case scenario is that the climber just climbs out using their pressings. Of course, wouldn't be crevasse rescue if we did that now, would it? So, she needs rescuing. Justin, we're gonna have to haul. Okay. So, what we can do is try and dig under the rope to the best of our ability wherever we can. We get this in as close as we can. I'm trying to lift on the rope and get it under it. So that as the rope continues to cut in, it won't disappear. I'm also going to put in my second tool and attach it to the shovel. Because we don't want that shovel getting dislodged and falling on the climber. Burying stuff in the snow helps as well. Alright, we'll work on it. So, as long as we're down here, we might as well set up the bottom half of the Z so we don't have to come down again. Use a little hero loop. Hero loop is just a really short pressing cord. And again, I'm putting extra on because we are on a skinny, icy rope. Get it dressed. And then I want to make sure I'm on the uphill side of this thing so that I'm not trapped here. All right, so there we go. We'll be pulling uphill as I move up. All right, since we're now ready to haul, Jess, Justin's going to take our safety knot out, which was a clove hitch there. He'll slide that off. And then he's going to clip himself into the system so that he can prepare to haul. All right, we've got the Z set up, so now we're gonna start pulling. I'm staying down close to the tractor so that I can keep an eye out and listen for my climber. I don't wanna pull him into the lip and crush him. Ready? Justin, let's go. How we doing, Dana? Doing okay. All right, Justin, this will be a good place for a reset. Alright, so when we reset, I want to slide this pressing back down so it catches. That's why we've got the pressing mining pulley here. So now as we release, alright Justin, ease off. 
as we release it catches. And that's going to hold the climber in place while I go down and reset the tractor and slide it back down closer to him. All right, this is a close-up of what we've got going here. This is our pressing mining pulley. This is our pressing. Our climber is on this strand here. This is part of our Z. Justin, go ahead and pull her up a little bit. You can see the rope moving through. That's good. Now when he stops, this will slide back. Go ahead and ease back, lower back. This starts pulling back until it tightens up. Sorry. And now it's caught. So now our haul strand is loose, but the climber strand is caught here. That's how the system works. Go. All right. So now we've hauled her up part way, and I'm going to reset the tractor, sliding it down the rope. Of course, I'm still pressing in, just in case I get too close. Good to see you there, Dana. You doing all right? Yeah, I'm doing okay. All right. All right. We're ready to haul. Let me know how you're doing, okay? Haul, Justin. Got it? I'm up! Woo! Alright, let's keep her coming up. Keep crawling up till you're away from that edge. Alright, that's good. So remember, communications is one of the key. Talking to your teammates above and talking to your teammate that's in the crevasse. The other thing is speed. A real sense of urgency is needed. If you're in a real crevasse, that's a crack in the ice. It's cold. It's not just over a snowbank. It's cold in there, and you need to be really hustling to get them out. So remember, when they're coming over the lip, you may need to help them over that lip. Sometimes something that's handy is, is they can even do it, attaching a hero loop to the rope that they're going to be able to grab and pull on using their ice axe to get it up above the lip to help pull on. Uh, something else is, is if they get stuck and maybe you need to lower them a little bit, maybe their pack gets wedged or something like that, well that's where with that open system using the Muntner Mule really comes in. So I'm going to show you how it works. This is an open system. So this is our fallen climber right here. And if we needed to lower her for any reason, we can take this out. Let's just say that somehow we've got her pulled up into that lip too tight. So I'm going to undo this part. This has still got the mule right here. So now I'm going to pull that. And when I pull it, I want to pull it so it's breaking down. Okay. So now you can see right there's the Muntner. So we've got the load strand. And I'm going to start releasing her. And you can see it feeding through. So now we can control the brake strand here with Justin up above pulling on it, but I can continue to lower her on this. With that, you can release it and lower a weighted system. If you had a closed system, you wouldn't be able to do that.